All right, I want to take a look now at how we can combine all these array methods and arrow functions that I've been talking about in other videos. So I have an example here where I've got an array called people, and inside of that there is a series of four objects. So the curly braces donate, denote an object. Uh, there's three properties, ID, name, and email. ID is a number, name is a string, email is a string. And what I want to do is I want to be able to use a couple of different uh, array methods. I'm going to use filter and I'm going to use map. And I want to go through and I want to extract just the names of the people who have email addresses that end with at replicant.io. So two-step version using our old standard functions. If I was to take people and I wanted to filter this, so I only get the items from the people array, so the objects out of the people array where their email address ends with at replicant.io. Okay, so we have our callback function with the item or person, I guess would be a better variable to use because we're going to be dealing with each of these objects and each of these objects represents a person. So I'm going to use that variable name inside my function. And I'm going to return true or false depending on whether or not they've got that email address. Now I just put this in here so I could be a little bit faster. Now, if you're familiar with the string index of method, you'll know that we're searching inside of email. So whatever this string is, we're searching inside of it for this string. And the index of method is going to return to us the position where it is found. If it's not found, it returns negative 1. If it is found, it'll give you a number 0 or higher. So 0 if it starts at the very first character, and higher if it starts after that. So this is just going to return true or false for each one of the people. So the person is the object, email is the property inside the object. So we're looking at the value of the emails, one after the other. Now replicants is now going to be a brand new array that contains only these two, Roy Batty and Pris. They're the only two that have an email address that ends with that. Then to get the names, what I need to do is I need to extract just the names. So I'm going to build another array from replicants. So starting with replicants, I'm going to call the map method, and it's going to need, again, the object passed in, so person, and I want to return person.name. That's it, just the name. So I'm just going to be extracting this little bit and this little bit. Replicants is going to be an array that contains just two things, this one and this one. And from those two things, I'm going to be extracting just the name property. So Roy, Batty, and Pris, this names array will contain those now. So if I run this again, there we go, Roy, Batty, and Pris. All right, now I'm going to repeat this process, but I want to chain the two of them together. Instead of having to declare variables and do this separately, we're going to start with this one. And then instead of creating a new variable, I'm just going to say dot map replicant names is going to hold the result of whatever I do on this line. People.filter is going to give me back an array. Well, if I put an array in front of dot map or dot filter, this is going to call that method on what's in front of it. So function, person, same as we had above. And inside of here, we're returning person.name, the exact same as we did above. OK, I run this now. There, first two are working. The two-step version, where I declared separate variables, or I chained them together. And this is something that you can do with these array methods filter, for each, map, reduce, all of these methods, you can chain them together 
and they will be run in the order that you place them. So filter ran first, and then map ran on the resulting array that you got back from filter. As long as this first method returns an array, this will run against that array. Now, to save, our, save ourselves a little bit more space and time and typing, I know I've done this three times, but <laughs> if I was only doing this third method, then I would be able to save myself a little bit of time and, and effort. So people dot filter, and then it's going to do the dot map. So I'm chaining them together, same as I did before, but I'm going to use an arrow function instead of writing out function and return inside of here. So a person is getting passed in to the method, and we're going to be returning person dot email dot index of at replicant dot io greater than negative one. Now if it's a little clear to you to wrap a set of parentheses around this, you can do that. It's not going to hurt anything. You can put the curly braces in there, but we don't need to. I can put the parentheses in here just to help highlight what I'm doing. Again, I don't need to. Around person, I can add the parentheses, but again, I don't need to. And to help with legibility a bit, I'm just going to put this down on the next line. That won't affect how it runs at all. For map person, and we're going to return person dot name. And I'm just I'm putting extra spaces in here purely for legibility, not for any other reason. There, space it out just so you can read it a little bit better. That's going to go back into RN for replicant names, and I should get the exact same result for the third one. And there we go. So we can take arrays of objects and call any one of these array methods on that, even though it's not a string or a number inside, it's an object. And we can also chain together our methods, just like we have here. We called filter first and then map second. We called filter first and map second. And using the arrow functions, you can see it does reduce the amount of typing that you have to do. But we're starting to get to the edge of where you would have to consider whether or not readability was an issue for you. So if you're well documenting your code, if you're putting lots of comments, um, and it's still legible, you can still fit it onto one line, then I recommend using them. Just start experimenting with the arrow functions, and I think after you get used to using them, after you're used to the different syntax, you will start to really appreciate the power behind them.